when you're doing a big science fiction film called Interstellar, there's a sort of promise there that in some way it's going to be dealing with reality, in some way it's going to be dealing with the extraordinary nature of our universe. And Kip Thorne, our executive producer, who's one of the great astrophysicists, he was on the project before I was. So in the case of Interstellar, the importance of the science was baked into the project. It was very much in the DNA of the project right from the beginning. And in everything I did and all my collaborations with Kip, we tried to be true to that initial impulse of looking at reality, looking at what's available to us in terms of the body of knowledge of real physics, real astrophysics, and the narrative possibilities that, that those amazing concepts would offer. There were the occasional moments with Kip where I would sort of say, look, we really have to find a way to make you know, this happen. Uh, and you know, he would go away and do calculations and, and find ways that um, could accommodate both the demands of the story and also uh, real physics, uh, particularly with regard to things like time dilation. You know, I would sort of tell him, okay, well, this is what, what I think works for the story in terms of the differential between the time the astronauts are experiencing and the people back on Earth. Say, so, well, this is what I think is dramatic, if you can find a way to make that work. And he would uh, do a lot of calculations and, and use his great knowledge and, and figure out how that would be possible. And sometimes, to his surprise, he would find out that, that what I'd been proposing based on narrative demands was, in fact, perfectly possible. Uh, and at other times, he would say to me, no, that's not going to work. You've got to find, find another way. Um, so it was a really productive back and forth. But overall, it really wasn't a question of Kip being the science police on the project. It was much more about him being a, a collaborator with this sort of vast body of really extraordinary and very surprising information about how the universe works that offered all kinds of really interesting possibilities for the story. We, we really, that's very important to me. I mean, I, one of the, the things about the film right from the beginning that we, we all really believed is it feels like time to try and inspire another generation to really look outwards and, and look to the stars again. Um, you know, when I was a child, uh, people were still visiting the moon. Uh, when I was a child, you know, the first probes were being sent right out into the solar system and indeed eventually beyond. And I think it's time to get back to that. And we really hoped that by dramatizing these ideas, by dramatizing science and, and making it something that hopefully could be entertaining for kids, we might, you know, inspire some of the astronauts of tomorrow. I mean, that would be, a, that would be the, the ultimate goal of the project, really. I've always been interested in science, and one of the things that I kept the forefront of my thinking in making Interstellar was most of what I know about uh, the scientific issues portrayed in the film, I learned as a child. Uh, there were great television programs like Cosmos, you know, Carl Sagan did. I mean, I remember that very, very clearly. I learned a lot of information watching that. I got a lot of fascinating insights into the, the possibilities of the universe. And so we felt a real responsibility with the film to try and inspire young people in the same way because I'm not a scientist and Kip had to hold my hand through a lot of the more complicated scientific elements of the film. But I did know the underlying principles and I had an excitement about those underlying principles that I gained when I was really 10 or 11 years old. I don't think it's necessarily a case of consumers wanting more accuracy, but I think consumers have much more immediate access to information. And so if you go see a film about a particular subject, particularly a true life story, you can go home and look it up on Wikipedia you know, half an hour later and see whether the, the, the basic things portrayed in the film are true or not. Same is true of science in films. You know, if you're curious about, okay, would that really happen or would that not happen? It's very, very immediate to be able to look up some of those things uh, online. And indeed, after we released Interstellar, there was a lot of debate online about various things we portrayed in the film. Um, and people were able to access a lot of information about it and bandy around you know, different theories very quickly. And that's, that's a very different cultural environment uh, that's never really existed before, where even with high-level physics, that information can be quite readily made available to someone who's just a casual film goer. And that's a very exciting thing, but it also means filmmakers really have to be on their toes. And we knew that because Kip 
was an executive producer on the project, and that's certainly something we were very proud of and wanted to talk about. We knew we were going to get an enormous amount of scrutiny on the science of the film, and so we had a real responsibility to make sure that everything was plausible. I don't think I would say it's more difficult to suspend disbelief, but I would say you have to go about it in a slightly different way. You slightly, I think, have to embrace the reality and appeal of reality a little bit more in your storytelling because I think the audience with certain subjects that were once obscure, audiences are very smart and sophisticated now, they're very savvy, they, they know a lot about film as well, they know a lot about uh, narrative devices because they've grown up watching an enormous number of films and with access, immediate access to you know, all of film history which I didn't have when I was a kid, you know, and my kids growing up now uh, they can watch all kinds of great old films, blockbusters of the past and all the rest. And so the cliches, the devices, the shortcuts we take, uh, audiences are very, uh, very hip to those things right now. And so I don't think it's harder. It's just a question of, I think, having to approach things with a little more credibility, a little more of a sense of respecting uh, the research that you, you've done in uh, putting the film together. I, I had a blast making a film that science was a was a key part of and uh, I'd love to do it again in the future I, mean, I don't have any specific plans to but it was a really really rewarding experience to deal with uh, knowledge to deal with all of the interesting theories uh, that these great scientists have developed over time and, and try and in some way put that into a dramatic context to make an audience interested in it excited by it it was a really fulfilling uh, you know creative endeavor so I'd love to do it again at some point <laughs> no, I don't have any immediate plans yet. I'm taking my time and just working on a few things. <laughs>